All right. Well, welcome to this episode of After Hours Egg. Uh, today we have a special guest. Uh, his name is Tim Kazette. And one of the things we want to share with After Hours Egg is we we go out to all of these all of these farms and we uh, we do work out there and and I've been out to plenty of farms and everybody has their own story and and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to say hey welcome to my farm and so Tim was gracious enough to come on for our for our first episode ever of Welcome to My Farm. Um, Tim has been on the radio quite a few times and and this is honestly my first interview ever so we'll see how this goes. I'm glad Tim has <laughs> some experience in in interviewing. Well, oh, thanks Adam for having me. I I appreciate it. Tim can say he's number one. Yeah, I'm he is number one. He's yeah, number one. I've been told I'm number one before. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the hope is we'll uh, we'll get lots of farmers on here sharing lots of ideas, and I think that'll be great. And, and that's part of the reason that I wanted to come on. Just uh, I think if we can if we can set the table and 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 let everybody tell their story, because um, to me it doesn't feel like that fun of a story. You know what I mean? Like, but I love hearing other people's stories. Yeah. You know, mine, mine is just normal life. That's what happened. Yeah. And my hope is, my hope is that, you know, if, uh, you know, down the road here, somebody's like, oh, what's, what about your, what about your story? You're like, oh, listen to this podcast. We just, <laughs> we I don't talked about all you, this. Yeah. So just yeah. Listen to yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. I'll just send you a link. Thing. Yeah. Let me send you a link or, <laughs> you know, my, my hope is that it's, it's the kind of thing that, uh, I think in the radio world or the, the, the video world, they're like evergreen. It's, it's good for forever yeah and since this is the first one i'll have to have you back at some point someday the kids uh, someday the kids will google my name and they'll see that uh they'll see this podcast and then my photo in the new york times there you go (laughs) (laughs) well great well let's dive into the interview all right so tim you farm up by hillsborough right correct yep so how how far does your farm stretch i our farm is about uh 27 miles corner to corner okay uh blanchard Blanchard, North Dakota, which is a, a metropolis of about uh, 12 people, maybe 15. Um, Do they have anything in their town? Uh, a cafe, probably. No. Oh, no. 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 They've not. got a lot of grain storage. A lot of grain uh, storage. They got, three right. fa- they got three phase power, so that's kind of helpful. Hey, we're moving uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a great, great spot. It's on the corner of Highway 200 and, uh, and State Highway 18. So it's a nice location for, uh, for grain storage. That's why we picked our, our bin site there but it is on the southwest corner of our farm. And then we farm uh, all the way up to um, just east of east of the Mayville exit. So, um, you know, it's north and south. We're 12 miles, okay, 12 to 14 miles. Uh, and then east and west, I suppose it's, you know, 16, 16 18 miles wide that way. Um, kind of a square there. Yeah. So it, it uh, geographically, it's a nice fit for us. We, we kind of get... Our farm, our, our home farm, the homestead is right in the middle of that. So it kind of kind of encompasses all the way around there. And, and it, it's been working pretty good for us, I guess. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about uh, your your last name is, do you pronounce it Cazette? Cazette, yep. Cazette. Yep. Okay. What, uh, what, is, what heritage is that? Uh, so I guess it's a Slovakian name. Okay. Um, uh, I, I don't know a lot about it. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of of, uh, deep family history, I guess on that. And, and, uh, I guess it never really mattered. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, how, well, how, how far back do you know your family history? Where, um, how did you guys come to your farm where you're at right now? So my dad's grandpa or, or my great grandpa, yep. um, I believe was the homestead. Like our, our main farm where my sister lives now was, uh, was our homestead. And that's, uh, where my great grandpa ended up landing, I guess. Um, my grandfather was adopted. Him and his sister were both adopted. Um, and then, and then, uh, they moved into that farm after grandpa died or great grandpa died. And, uh, they lived there for a long, long time. And, uh, I was actually hopeful to move into that farm and, uh, they were still living there and, and things, things happened. I found a farmstead just a few miles away and uh, moved into that place, and then they decided to move to town. So then <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of how it works, you know. You, you just uh, The timing was off by just a couple of years. Uh, but that was, uh, that was a fortunate turn of events because that brought my oldest sister and her husband to the farm. So they, they used to live in Fargo, and, and my sister, uh, my oldest sister, Teresa, works, worked as an accountant or worked with an accountant. And she, um, she came back, and, and her husband... Um, was, uh, he was working in town here 
and uh, they decided they were going to start farming. So then it was my dad and myself and my sister and brother-in-law all farmed together. Um, and my mother and my mother as well. She passed away in 2014. Um, so that, that scenario played out and uh, we were all kind of farming together. And, uh, and then actually my brother-in-law ended up passing away. So then my sister, my oldest sister retired uh, from farming uh, because she's got, she's got a couple kids that she, she needed to take care of. She still works with us on the farm. She manages all the bookkeeping and that kind of stuff for the farm, but uh, retired from the farming. Um, and then recently this year, my younger sister and her husband are going to join us in a venture. Uh, we're going to try and raise some sugar beets this year. So that'll be, that'll be another uh, hook up with uh, with the rest of the gang, I guess, and yeah, that's, get everybody involved. That's great that you have every, you know, family is starting to come back together in this. And, yep. Um, so have you, you said sugar beets. Have you, you've never raised sugar beets before, ever? This will be the first crop. I've never hauled a load of sugar beets to the factory, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But Derek, my brother-in-law's had some experience, and my sister works for Ag Country Farm Credit Services. Uh, she's a transition specialist, so she's she's visited with a lot of growers and that kind of stuff and has a, a little bit of insight and, and a, a good knowledge of, of the inner workings of the paperwork and that kind of stuff that would be involved in that. So if you were to tell somebody, uh, some, somebody coming right out of high school, they cut, they're coming from their farm and you said, what should you go into? What would you tell somebody? What would be your, maybe even your top three, maybe it's tech school, maybe it's you know, egg systems management, maybe it's engineering, maybe it's something completely different. So that's a, that's a great point. Cause that's something that nobody ever told me when I, you know, I, I thought, well, I got to go to school. I got to go to school. I got to go to an egg school to be a farmer. But realistically, all of the school, the school to be a farmer was the school of hard knocks, right? <laughs> you learned all the, all the, all the, the stuff from grandpa and from dad, some of the base, you know, a lot of the basics, not all of the things. I mean, there's a ton of egg things uh, that I went to school that were, were helpful. Yep. You get to learn from the things they learn. Correct. But realistically, what, what a person should be looking at is finance or, uh, you know, business management because, because production ag isn't just, isn't just farming anymore. It, it, it's so much more than just raising a crop. That's the funnest part. Raising a crop is right. the, is the right. fun part. Farmers want to farm. <laughs> That's absolutely what we want to yeah. do, but we're business owners and we have to manage that uh, to a level and it's a, and it's a big business. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just a, it's not just a small deal. So, um, uh, you know, some of that stuff I think would be helpful finance classes, um, accounting, um, some of those, uh, additional, um, things that would probably really be valuable to a, to a new producer or to a, to a, an operation. Cause generally speaking, you're not going to have a brand new producer. It's going to be a generational type thing. So, uh, you know, the second, second generation, third generation farmer can bring that to the table and help take the farm that their dad or their grandpa's built and take it to the next level. Like, like you got to figure out how to move that operation and not just, not just prolong it, take it yeah. to the next level. Right. Yeah. I think that, uh, it's kind of like being on a ball. If you're, if you're not rolling forward, you're probably rolling backwards. There's got to be going to run you over. There's going to be a direction for sure. Yep, there's going to be a direction. And the, and the agronomy, I mean that that kind of stuff can be advantageous as well. I mean if you if you can if you have a, a dad or a, a grandfather that's not uh, as strong in an agronomic background, you could bring that to the table and, and really add value to the operation uh, that way too. So don't get me wrong, the yeah. the crop production side can carry some some of that value as well. What's something that you you feel like you know is conventional wisdom, or something that, or maybe even it's something that's been debunked now, but ten years ago or fifteen years ago, somebody was like, "No, this is this is gospel right here. How how dare you think that we could do this in this area? What you know, what what would be something that that is conventional wisdom that you think you would challenge? So, something that I think might be might be worth challenge is is. Uh, Oftentimes as producers, we feel like we can't sell our crop before we've got it produced. There's a lot of growers out there, a lot of, a lot of people that are, that are under the impression that, okay, I got to know what I got before I can sell it. And I think it, it can hamstring us in this day and age in the, in the markets that we're carrying our crop into. I think we got to take advantage of, 
of uh, pre-sales, you know, some of that stuff um, and use the tools like crop insurance that, uh, that will allow us to, to uh, cover any bushels. If we're, if we're missing, you know, if we're missing bushels at the end of the year, we've got tools in place to help us sell those bushels at the best price we can without having to, without having to risk going backwards. And I think the conventional wisdom is that, well, once we find out what we've got for a crop, then we can sell it. And, and it's true. It works out good. I mean, and, and a lot of farms have made it that way, but I think we can maximize our profits or maximize our, our, uh, our income in a way. Uh, it's just scary because yeah. we don't know what world event is going to affect the market. And it's, uh, it's always all about opportunity missed. You feel like you might leave something on the table or whatever, but if you had to look out 50 years, what, what kind of predictions would you make for 50 years from today? Well, I think, you know, the, the thing that's going to probably be the same is going to be, I mean, there's going to be slightly less acreage. I would guess that there'll be, that the, the consolidation is going to continue to happen. Uh, there'll be less and less growers. I mean, we're already down to, boy, I don't know what the stat is, if it's under 1% or under 2%, you know, of, of production ag. Um, obviously, there's still plenty of, of other businesses that are in involved in ag or, or direct contributors to ag or direct uh, people from ag. But I think the consolidation will continue to happen. Farms will continue to get bigger and bigger, um, which will require machines to to do more and more um, just because the manpower, the, the, the people working won't, it, it won't be able to, there'll be less and less of them, obviously. And, and with that being said, you'll have to have more and more machines. So there'll be, there'll be drone technology or there'll be uh, autonomous tractors. I mean, all of that stuff is happening. Yep. It's here. Right. Um, but the scale will continue to grow in my opinion. Um, and in 50 years, I mean, what will we be? There, there probably will be an opportunity for, for a person to manage several tractors from one building or from one room um, and, and, and tractors and operations or, or what be, um, I, I, I don't envision that that's going to happen in my lifetime. Yep. For sure. Or our lifetime. I mean, it's, I mean, the strides they've made in the last 10 years even have been, they've been huge strides. I think some of it's just liability. Right. You get down to that, you get down to liability. Well, and cost effectiveness. I mean, they got to right. figure out how to make it, make it valuable or make it, make it work to the level that, that the operations are going to need it. The generation of farmers is turning over. Like Correct. you've taken over yeah. your low forties. There's plenty of guys now that are starting to take over. They're in their thirties. They're in their forties. And they're, you know, they, they grew up in, in our era of like, heck, my dad didn't even want to reset watches. Like right. he's like, I don't know. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break it. I'm like, you know, we, we grew up in the area of like, let's just push buttons. Yeah. Till it works. Yeah. You know, that's, this doesn't that's work. The, this yeah, is stupid. This is, this doesn't work. <laughs> I'm just going to push buttons till it works, you know, or, yeah. or you remember like the, uh, the windows 98 when it would say, uh, uh, you performed an illegal operation. Fun- operation. <laughs> You're too young for that, aren't you? I have no idea what that is. Yeah, so it would say it would say you performed this illegal operation. So like I remember distinctly. Are my, we getting arrested? My grandma saying almost that. Yeah. I remember my. There grandma was a concern there at a time. Yeah. We did something illegal. Oh yeah. my god. They're we coming can, for us. And then you just x out of it. The yeah. man in black. Unplug. Yeah. Black unplug quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't don't get them into the into the uh, yeah. It's not Wi-Fi. Into the dial-up modem. Right. Yeah. Like they were going to be able to connect to you that fast anyway. Right. Right. Oh right. My. <laughs> yeah. That was Funny. that was a thing. And so I think that yeah, it does scare some people as to like setting it up and. When I talk to people, oh man, our our place is falling. We need apart. to really figure this. <laughs> anyway, you'd have uh, they're like, I'm I'm uh, I'm a little worried about doing the electronics. I'm like, man, I will walk you through that in five minutes. Yeah, that you and, call me. And these engineers are making it so easy because the concern is uh, uh, an aged aged group that or an age group that is older than than us. Yeah, and they're willing. And and there's plenty of guys that are in their fifties in sixties that are now they're they're the the guys that adopted the technology. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's there's plenty of people that are even in their, you know, seventies, eighties that are good with technology. I right. think that it's just yeah. a generational thing too that mm. more people in in the younger generation are just you're just more comfortable pushing buttons. Yeah. Yeah. But, your your fear your fear of something catastrophic happening yeah. is is way less. Yeah. I think the crazy parts I've done support and stuff for the blockage monitor too, uh the crazy ones are like 
you you talk for five minutes on how to find the home button on the front of the <laughs> iPad. I'm like, it's the only button there. <laughs> There's one. There's button. one button. But the crazy thing is those all those guys that I talk to are able to run it. Yeah. You know, so even though we spent five minutes trying to find the only button, <laughs> the only physical button on the main screen, they're still able to use it. Mm. Right. Know? And and that's that's testament to the again to the engineers and the and the software designers that they. They just figured it out. They're like, well, we got to make it this simple. Mm -hmm. It's got to be this easy. And it can be this simple. That's the thing is it. But it's so powerful. It's doing a ton of stuff in the background. Right. But the display, the interface doesn't need to be complicated. Mm -hmm. For sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of After Hours Ag. If you enjoyed the content and you want to get the full version of the interview, head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, or wherever you consume your podcasts uh, and listen over there. Uh, If you really enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and remember, there's still a future in farming, so let's get there together.